In our next episode of Fresh Food Therapy, I'm gonna teach you how to make one of my favorite childhood recipes, chicken fettuccine Florentine. See you on the show. Welcome back to Fresh Food Therapy. Today's episode is all about making a comfort meal that I remember all the way back to about age 12 when my uncle taught me how to make chicken fettuccine Florentine. We were spending the day palling with each other and we got back to his house and he said, hey, are you hungry? And I said, yeah, I'm hungry. He goes, watch this. And he literally pulled about four or five different ingredients from his refrigerator, threw them together very, very quickly. And we were sharing about a pound of pasta between the two of us. And that I can tell you was the defining moment that got me excited about culinary arts. So today I'm gonna teach you from easy to more difficult, how to prepare chicken fettuccine Florentine. So we're gonna start with the most simple and easy preparation. It's, it's really kind of cheating to do this, but it's tasty and it's quick. So let's say you have a fear of boiling pasta because you think you'll either undercook it or overcook it. I looked on the shelf while I was shopping and I found Barilla pasta that is already cooked. All you need to do is stick it in the microwave for, for 60 seconds. So the pasta angle is already taken care of. All we really need to do is saute some spinach, add in a little bit of chicken, add the store-bought sauce, bring it to temperature, and then toss in the pasta, and you've got the dish complete. So let's put it together real quick. This is the ultra cheating method. We're gonna put in a little bit of olive oil, and we're gonna heat the pan to a medium, medium high. Now, even on the cheat method, we're gonna use fresh spinach because I'm trying to get you to use fresh produce. But if let's say for the sake of argument, it's hard for you to find fresh spinach in the store, not a problem. You can use a little bit of frozen spinach or canned spinach if you can't get it. Um, if you don't wanna go through the effort, um, of washing the spinach very, very well, you can very easily uh, go to the store and buy triple washed baby spinach. And all you have to do literally is open that up and start cooking with it. In this case, we used fresh leaf spinach. And what I'm doing is right now, I'm, I've, I've washed it very well, two or three times to make sure there's no sand or grit. And what we're doing is we're just taking off the stems, leaving beautiful green leaves. The amount of iron that's contained in spinach is pretty significant. And if you're looking for something to make salads with, or if you're trying to get more, uh, more roughage into your diet, adding a little bit of spinach to things is not only delicious, but it's also really, really good for you. So the pan should be coming up to temperature. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the small amount of spinach that we have, and we're gonna put it into the pan. Now it's only gonna take a minute or two to start cooking down. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little bit of garlic salt to just season it. And we're gonna lightly saute. We're just basically wilting the spinach because it'll continue to cook in with the dish. When the leaves become darker and it looks like they're getting soft, that's when we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in the chopped fresh chicken. This is really just chicken that's left over from a rotisserie chicken and we just have to get it hot. That should only take another maybe a minute. Now the pasta, we're going to stick into the microwave so that it's ready to go. Literally all you have to do is open it, move the pasta around a little bit, and then we're going to take it and we're going to put it in the microwave for one minute. Now that the chicken is hot and the spinach is cooked almost all the way through, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take an over-the-counter Alfredo sauce or a bechamel sauce. Shake before you use. And we're just gonna coat. Now, store-bought sauce has a, quite a bit of sodium and a, quite a bit of flavor to it. It's one of the reasons why it's such a wonderful thing to have on hand. So we don't need to really worry about seasoning it so much. I would wait to taste it once you add the pasta to it to see whether you want to add any salt or pepper or any other seasonings. 
But now that the sauce is coming up to temperature, all we have to do literally is grab the pasta that just came out of the microwave after 60 seconds, toss it in, and we're ready to serve. So once the pasta is hot and added to the dish, as soon as everything comes together, all you need to do is take it off the heat and let it sit for just a moment and you should be ready to serve. The most quick, easy, and cheap method of making chicken fettuccine Florentine. Okay, so now that we've gone through the super easy cheating method, let's go and make it a little bit more interesting. So, you get home from work, you don't have a lot of time, and you're very hungry. But what you were smart enough to do is to boil some pasta at the beginning of the week and to portion it off into little bags. So now you have a meal ready to go within just a few moments. So what we're gonna do is just like before, we're gonna turn on the saucepan, we're gonna put in a little bit of olive oil, but this time we're gonna start with fresh garlic. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna slice ever so finely or sliver it. And we're gonna add that to the oil. Now it's only going to take a second or two for the garlic to begin to cook. So we're going to add the spinach right away. And once we add these last two leaves, we're going to give it a little bit of a stir just to make sure that the garlic isn't burning or starting to brown. We're going to add the chicken, pre-cooked and chopped. With the fresh garlic in there, the smell is already intoxicating. It's wonderful. Now the chicken just needs to come up to temperature and then we're gonna add a little bit of the over-counter sauce. Now the pasta that we're gonna be using is the pasta that we cooked off early. We cooked it to seven or eight minutes, which is about a minute or two less than what it needs to be cooked to come to al dente. So it's still a little, a little bit firm. But what we're gonna do is we're going to put it into the sauce and it's going to draw moisture out of the sauce and it'll finish cooking there. It just requires us to leave the pasta in the sauce and allow it to cook for a few more moments than the other one where the pasta was already prepared and just needed to be microwaved. So we're gonna take this beautiful linguine and I just used a normal everyday sandwich bag to store it, fold it over. If you're going to be doing that, it's always best to write down the date that you did it so that you are rotating your stock as, as cleanly as possible. And once it comes up to temperature, it should be ready to serve. Okay, so we've taken you through the super cooking phobic version, and we've sent you through the easy, quick version. Now we're gonna go and do the traditional preparation that my uncle taught me. So we're gonna start by turning on the pan and we're gonna add a little bit of olive oil to it. Now in this preparation, the first thing we're gonna put in is the chicken because we need to make sure that the chicken is actually cooked all the way through. So we're gonna take a, a chicken breast and we're gonna cut it into bite-sized pieces. You want them about just bite-sized so that they can get on the fork. Now, because we're not using store-bought sauce for this, we're gonna have to season and we're gonna have to trust ourselves a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by putting a little bit of garlic salt down instead of fresh garlic, just a light coating. And then I'm gonna put in some black pepper. Again, just a light coating. And you can hear it starting to sizzle which means it's coming up to temperature. Chicken needs to be cooked all the way through to 165 degrees. So it's gonna take a few minutes. And because we're gonna be making the sauce from scratch, what we're going to do is we're gonna grate some, some real fresh Parmesan cheese. I have to be completely honest with you. It's gonna be more expensive than going and using just an over-the-counter cheese that's a shaker cheese but I'm gonna tell you that the flavor 
is out of this world. And if you're going to end up spending your money on anything, go ahead and treat yourself to some of the great things. But in order to do that, you have to have a grater. So I'm gonna pull out the grater in just a moment and I'm going to grate some fresh Parmesan cheese for this dish. So the chicken just needs to be turned. It's getting to the point where it's cooked all the way through and all the pieces are looking fantastic. I would say it's about another minute and a half. At this point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a, a pinch of normal salt and we're gonna pepper it one more time. Once the chicken is completely cooked, that's when we're gonna add the spinach. We're not gonna add the spinach until we know that the chicken is cooked completely thoroughly. Now that the chicken is cooked all the way through, we're gonna add the spinach to the dish and we're gonna let it cook down a little bit. Now the thing about spinach is that it does cook down quite a bit. So you can always use a little bit more than you think you need or want. We may find that this pan is a little small for what I just did, but we'll get through. Now the spinach and the chicken will continue to cook down. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna prep the Parmesan cheese for the dish. It's a hard cheese, and this is a traditional grater that my grandmother used to use with me on Sunday mornings. Now I have to be honest, if you've never grated cheese before, you're in for a treat. It's very therapeutic, it takes some time, but the fruits of your labor are worth every amount of, of effort. The only thing is you have to be very, very careful because this will take skin right off of your hand if you're if you're not careful always hold the the cheese so that you have control over it and always make sure that you're going smooth and slow so that you don't risk um, injuring yourself or having a little extra protein in with your parmesan cheese now that the chicken is cooked all the way through and the spinach is cooking down we're going to be adding the heavy whipping cream it's literally just heavy cream there's no seasoning to it and it has a tendency to be a little, a little bland. But you are building your first cream sauce. So a little bit goes a long way. We're gonna to need to have it reduced just a little bit. And to help it thicken up and reduce, we're gonna actually add some of the Parmesan cheese that we just grated. To make sure that it doesn't clump, we're gonna sprinkle it very lightly and we're gonna allow the cheese to melt very slowly into the dish. So never add more than just enough to coat the very, very top and then give it a little bit of time to melt. If you add the, so the cheese too quickly, it will actually begin to clump and then the sauce won't be uh, a consistent smoothness and the flavor will be uh, jarring as well. So what we're gonna do is go into the last phase. We're gonna add a little bit of more of the Parmesan cheese just a light coating so that it continues to melt in and thicken up the sauce a little bit. And then once we stir this in, we're gonna add a little bit more salt, a little bit more pepper to increase the, the, the richness of the dish. And if you're watching, you can see that the sauce is actually starting to look like a cream sauce. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to add the fresh fettuccine that I just boiled off into the dish and we're gonna allow it to coat the pasta. It will take just a few moments to finish, but once it thickens up just a little bit, it's perfect to serve and ready to go. So what we're gonna to do to go along with our pasta dish is make a really quick oil and vinegar green salad. Literally, it's gonna take about 45 seconds. Ready? Begin. sliced up the lettuce and uh, now I'm just slicing up the tomatoes into about the appropriate size pieces for the salad. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add just a little bit of olive oil. And a little bit of red wine vinegar.
we're going to toss it to evenly coat the olive oil and the red wine vinegar. And then once it's tossed, we're gonna add just a little bit of salt and pepper. And toss one more time. And there you have it. A salad that only takes a minute or two to put together and is ready for your pasta meal. Okay, so for the piece de resistance of this dish, we're gonna make a little bit of our famous garlic bread because we happen to have our wonderful garlic butter on hand. All we need is a French loaf. The warning that I have for you is this. Do not allow yourself to make any more garlic bread than what you absolutely need to use in that occurrence because whatever you make, you are going to consume. So we have three plates of pasta and we're gonna be rather generous. I'm gonna use a half of the French loaf. That should be enough for each plate to have two or three pieces of garlic bread. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna lay down a little bit of the garlic spread on the bread. Uh, the garlic spread uh, was made in the uh, new and improved macaroni and cheese craft dinner episode. And it has fresh garlic, butter, uh, a little bit of olive oil, about the same amount as the, the butter, and then garlic salt and Italian seasonings. We're going to add a little bit of shaker cheese over the top. And it's literally ready to go under the broiler. It should only take about 90 seconds to two minutes to toast up nice and brown. So what we just went through was teaching you three very different ways of making chicken fettuccine Florentine. From the easiest with store-bought pasta that was ready to be tossed into the sauce that was store-bought with just spinach and pre-made chicken, to you making your own pasta but putting together pre-made ingredients and tossing it together, to making it from scratch yourself. A little bit of fresh salad and a little bit of garlic bread turns this into a feast. I hope you enjoyed this episode and we look forward to cooking with you again for Fresh Food Therapy.